it ran away and died. Very sad. Didn't like to talk about it. I don't actually mind talking about it. Worst hamster ever. I don't think I'm ever going to talk about my hamster anywhere else. Do you want me to talk about my hamster? Have I talked to you about my hamster before? I had a hamster when I was young. Um, I had a hamster. It was a yellow hamster. It was called Suki. Um, how old was I? I was like 13 or 12, maybe. I just wanted a pet. Never had... Well, I had a dog and fish and stuff, but I'd never had, like, my own hamster. So I went to a pet store, saw a cute yellow hamster, called it Suki, S-U-K-I. Why the hell did I call my hamster that thing? Oh, yeah, the hat thick. Good. Glad that that's all reminded you of that. Great writing. Um... <laughs> just don't, don't Google it. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, getting back on track. I had a hamster. Loved my hamster. Uh, as with many other aspects of my life, uh, because I was extremely depressed about my own existence, I decided to live vicariously through the happiness of my hamster, which I thought I could achieve by spending all of my pocket money on my hamster. So there was like a brand of hamster places where you could get like a tank and then you could extend it so you could buy like a bunch of pipes and like different rooms and it was kind of like Lego because you could just buy like connecty bits and you could build like a mansion for your hamster just by connecting bits so I bought like the original tank and then I just used to spend freaking all of my money on my hamster it was basically like if you pl were playing The Sims and it had microtransactions because much less than your own life you kind of just care about your sims life and you're thinking, yeah, I don't need to think about what I'm doing with my actual life or how happy I am or what, what I'm even doing because if my sims are really happy and successful and my sims has loads of money, then I'm happy, you know, what I, you, you guys know what I mean. It's like with every game. So that was like me with my hamsters. I just got too much joy from thinking about how happy I was making my hamster. So I used to just freaking like buy loads of things and it would have like the the nightclub extension which would be like a blue room and then it would have like a a slide and stuff like that and I'd buy the slide and then I'd buy loads of pipes and I just spent all of my money and then it got to a point where my family had to basically give me an intervention because they were like Dan you're spending all of your money on your hamster you are like my grandma was like so you washed my car and I gave you 10 pounds that's great, Daniel. But I feel like maybe you should spend some of the money on yourself. Because I think my, fa my family were thinking, the hamster doesn't know if it's happy or not. Firstly, I think that, you know, uh, buying any kind of pet that's confined to a, a small space is kind of cruel. So I'm kind of morally against goldfish balls and guinea pigs in tiny things and parakeets in cages for some reason. I don't know. I don't want to get too moral on pets here, but there's something about, like, something that could have a wired space in, like, a tiny box, but I'm like, oh, that's mean. You know what I mean? It's like, cats are great. Like, cats and dogs have the freaking best lives. Are you kidding me? I would die right now to be a dog. Are you kidding me? I would die right now to be a dog in a good home. That would just be the best thing. And just whatever. Um, yeah. So, um, they made me stop, uh, and then, long story short, hamster always used to break out. It always used to break out of the cage. Like, it was the freaking Houdini of hamsters, and it was so intelligent. Like, I imagine most people have pretty dumb hamsters, you know what I mean? Like, they just like, yeah, I'm a hamster. But my hamster, you could look at it, and you could tell that it knew it, that it was a self-aware hamster. Basically, it was aware of its own existence, which is a skill that I, I honestly believe most humans don't have the ability to be aware of their own place in the universe. My hamster definitely did. Maybe I'm, I'm, I was taught by my hamster. And it just used to, it used to do things like it would pile up all of the sawdust in its tank right to the edge, like a giant freaking pyramid of sawdust. And then it would go into the corner and it would basically cram itself like that and put its hamster hands against the roof. And then... It would extend its spine, and using the pressure of the sawdust pile that had put it, like, right here between the roof, it would pop off the lid of the tank, and I freaked out when I saw that happen. I was just like, my hamster is intelligent enough to basically, like, intelligently solve a puzzle and pop off the lid of its own tank, and I was just like, holy crap. So I used to, like, 
after that happened, I remember I put a book on the lid, and it did it again. I don't know how strong hamsters are, but a freaking fat-ass book, okay, on the top of this hamster tank, and it just pushed off the book as well, and I was like, right, okay, traumatizing experience. I don't know if any of you guys have had an escaped gerbil or hamster or anything, but trying to find a loose hamster in your bedroom can take like an hour, and you're always like, has my dog eaten it? Yeah, um, but it never did. Um, so then one day, I was like, it can just get out. So I put a book, an atlas, like a freaking pop-up Bible, the entire Chronicles of Narnia, which I had in this freaking fat-ass illustrated book that was like this big. Everything I had on top of this tank. I'm saying like this many books on top of this hamster tank. And at like 3 a.m. in the middle of the night, I just hear this banging and I'm like, what's happening? And I look at my bed and my hamster manages to push all of these books, which would be freaking heavy for like one of us to carry, just off and is out. And I'm just like, are you kidding? Is my hamster on crack? Am I, have I got a super hamster? Basically, I feel like uh, my hamster was exposed to toxic waste at some point before I bought it which would explain why it was hyper-intelligent and super strong at the same time. You know, it's the only logical explanation. So I was just dumbfounded, and I just used to try to keep it in its tank, but then I got really depressed because I was like, you know, I, 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 just, I, just, I just wanted a hamster. I just wanted a hamster, and now this hamster, clearly it wants to escape so much. It wants to be free. You know what I mean? It's been in a hamster ball. It knows that there is a world that is bigger than its hamster cage, and it knows, it knows that it is a prisoner. It is a prisoner in a fucking deluxe house with so many extensions, but it doesn't, you know, you can make a prison as nice as possible, but at the end of the day, it's a prison, you know what I mean? And the hamster knew that, and I feel like a big part of my own growth in emotional maturity was to do with the hamster. Because when I bought the hamster, I was just a boy that wanted a cute pet. I wanted a hamster to water and to feed little nibbles and to stroke to get out of its ball and go, oh, it's a little hamster scurrying across me and putting a hamster ball. But what I got was basically a hamster that taught me the moral that you learn at the end of The Shawshank Redemption, which is a film about prison. It taught me the value of freedom and morality at a very young age. So I thank this hamster and whenever I have these deep thoughts about, you know, freedom, I think my hamster, you know what I mean? We could, we could have all learned a lot from my hamster. So then towards the end, before it escaped, I just, I felt a bit sad because I kept, I kept taking it and putting it back in its cage. And I was just like, I don't know what to do with you because, you know, at this point, I feel like morally I should release you, but I can't really, you know, a hamster, where are hamsters from? They're like from the desert in Afghanistan, aren't they hamsters? What, what would a hamster released into the Berkshire suburban zone in Britain do? It would just get hit by a car, it would get eaten by a cat, it would get eaten by a bird, it would just die of cold, it would get rained on, it would just, you know, like the hamster couldn't live outside of the cage, but it wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, maybe my hamster wanted to try. Maybe my hamster would have rather tried to make it in this harsh world than to just live as a prisoner with all of the little hamster nibbles and fancy nightclub hamster slide extensions it could have dreamed of. And then one day, it just disappeared. I didn't even notice it. I just saw the lid popped off sawdust all over the floor and then the hamster was gone and me and my family we looked we looked in every room we took beds behind things we lifted up every drawer we looked behind the fireplace we took off the panels in the kitchen to see if it had like cooled behind the oven and it just gone it had gone i didn't get to say goodbye to it it was just a normal school day came home from school hamster was gone I never saw it ever again was i sad was i sad that the hamster that I bought and cherished and spent all of my money on had disappeared? No. Because my hamster, it taught me something. You know what I mean? It, it educated me on the value of freedom. 
So it was kind of like when Ash releases his Butterfree. I was sad, selfishly, that my hamster had gone. But at the same time, I was happy that my hamster had finally gotten the freedom that it wanted. And that is the story of my hamster. I feel like I should write a screenplay for that and sell it to a movie company. Yeah, man. Uh, sorry to any of you that own hamsters that now feel like horrible people. You kind of are, but only in the way that people that are brought up racist are racist and then realize that they are. I mean, you can't help that you didn't previously realize it was a moral issue, okay? This, you can't help it. Any bigotry that you have been ignorant on until the moment that you are enlightened about, I, I believe in forgiveness. You know what I mean? It's like if someone's brought up in a household and then one day they think, wow, my parents' values, I don't agree with them, I can forgive that person for things that they've said or thought in the past if they then become, you know, more educated in the world. So I'm, I'm not judging any of you. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, just, just someone wanted me to sing the llama song, didn't they? I could, I could sing the llama song.